Hi, in this video, we are going to continue our course on polynomials and we are going to talk about a specific topic, which is the roots of reciprocal polynomials. So I'll start off with a theorem. So it says that if R1 to Rd, R1 to Rd are the set of set of non-zero roots, non-zero roots of a polynomial Px of a polynomial P of x of degree d then the set 1 by r1 to 1 by rd is the set of roots of the reciprocal polynomial of the reciprocal polynomial of p of x. How do we find the reciprocal polynomial? Obviously, we will say x power d p of 1 by x. That is the reciprocal polynomial for p of x. Right? So what is the meaning of a reciprocal polynomial? It basically says that the coefficients will be in the reverse order. We have covered that in the previous videos. Right? This theorem tells us that for the reciprocal polynomial, the roots will be reciprocal of the initial roots, right? So let's see a couple of questions which will use this theorem. So this is my question one. If the polynomial, if the polynomial a x power five plus b x power four plus c, has exactly three real roots, has exactly three real roots, which are distinct, which are distinct. Prove that, prove that polynomial c x power 5 plus b x plus a has exactly three distinct real groups. Now the first thing you should notice is that the original polynomial here, the order of the coefficients is a, b, c. And here it is C, B, A. So this is looking like the reciprocal polynomial of the original one, right? So we will take a separate cases. We will say if R is equal to zero is a root of A x power five plus B x power four plus C equals zero, then obviously C must be zero, right? Therefore, this polynomial, if 0 is a root of this polynomial, then C must be 0. That is obvious when you put R is equal to 0 here. Hence, the polynomial starts looking like what? Polynomial looks like A x power 5 plus B x power 4. Right? This is the polynomial now because C is 0. So, which means we can take x power 4 common, we will get ax plus b. And this polynomial, you should realize, has four roots which are equal, four roots which are 0, and one root which is minus b by a. So, if you look at this polynomial, there are five roots, but four roots are equal because x power 4 can be 0. It has 0 with multiplicity 4. Right? And one root which is minus b by a. So actually, you can see that the polynomial has 
only two distinct real roots, right? Two distinct real roots. The roots are 0 and minus b by u. In this case, so the question said that the polynomial has exactly three real roots which are distinct, right? But right now, what am I getting? I'm getting two distinct real groups. So obviously, that is a contradiction. That means our assumption is wrong. Therefore, r is equal to 0 is not a root of the original polynomial ax power 5 plus bx power 4 plus c, which means that the original polynomial doesn't have 0 as a root, right? Correct. Therefore, c is also not equal to 0. Right? So now we will go ahead and we'll say that this polynomial, let's say ax power 5 plus bx power 4, 4 plus c, has three distinct real roots r, s, and t. Right? Now think about it. These are the distinct real roots. So the other two roots are imaginary. Other two roots must be imaginary must be imaginary. Now, we will use the fact that the other polynomial cx power 5 plus cx power 5 plus b x bx plus a is actually equal to x power 5 p of 1 by x. Now, let's check that x power 5 p of 1 by x will be a by x power 5 plus b by x power 4 plus c. Notice that when you multiply this out, this is the same. So we are getting that this is reciprocal of P of X. Right? So we know that the second polynomial is a reciprocal of P of X. Therefore, by using our theorem for the non-zero roots of the original polynomial, the reciprocal polynomial C X power 5 plus B X plus A must have, must have roots 1 by R, 1 by S, 1 by T, right? So the two remaining roots of the original polynomial were imaginary. Therefore, the two other roots of this polynomial must also be imaginary. Two imaginary roots and three real roots, which are 1 by R, 1 by S, and 1 by T. So the first part of the problem was basically confirming that 0 is not a root. When you have a polynomial P of X and a polynomial reciprocal of that polynomial, only the non-zero roots will be inverted, right? If R, S, T are roots of P of X, 1 by R, 1 by S, 1 by T will be roots of the re reciprocal polynomial of P of X. The same does not apply for zero as a root. We excluded that case by proving the contradiction that happens when you take zero as a root of the original polynomial, right? So that proves our question. This question actually appeared in the third round of the Russian Mathematical Olympiad 2012. So it's an interesting one. It is using the theorem for roots of reciprocal polynomials that we stated earlier. Let's look at another question. It says, let Px be a monic polynomial. What is a monic polynomial? It means the first coefficient, the coefficient of the highest power is 1. So it's a monic polynomial of degree 4 with roots 1, 2, 3, 4. Let Qx, Qx be monic polynomial of degree 4 polynomial of degree 4 with roots 1, half, 1 by 3, and 1 by 4. The question is asking us to find limit of x tends to 1, p of x by q of x. There are two ways to do it. I will show you the way which doesn't uh, which works by using the reciprocal polynomial theorem. Okay, So we can see here that Qx has roots which are reciprocal 
of the roots of p of x. Roots of p of x. So that means qx is the reciprocal polynomial for p of x. So we can say qx has to be some constant c x power 4 p of 1 by x because p of x was degree 4 therefore it is x power 4 p of 1 by x for some c which is belonging to real numbers right so qx must be this so we can figure out that p of x it is given as have a the monic polynomial so p of x starts off as x power 4 plus some terms and finally some constant and by Vieta's formulas, Vieta's formula says product of the roots, product of roots is equal to A in this case, which is equal to 1 into 2 into 3 into 4, which is equal to 24. So what we get is this last term is 24. So you're getting x power 4 plus some terms plus 24 for P of x, right? Using product of the rules stuff, right? product of the roots. We can also get other terms here, but right now I'm just focusing on the first term and the last term. So P of X is this, Q of X, if you calculate, will be basically C times X power four times P of one by X. And if you calculate P of one by X here, you will realize that it will come out to be C times 24 X power four plus so on, last term will be one. The coefficients will get reversed when you do x power 4 p of 1 by x, right? So what we are getting is q of x is c into x power 4 p of 1 by x, which comes out to be c into 24 x power 4 plus 1. And they said that q x x was also monic. So that means the C must be equal to 1 by 24. Then only the first coefficient of this will also be 1. Right? So what we are getting is Q of X is equal to 1 by 24 X power 4 P of 1 by X. Right? Correct. This is what is coming for us. Right? Now what is P of X by Q of X? P of x by Q of x would be P of x by Q of x I can write as 1 by 24 x power 4 P of 1 by x, right? So what I get P of x by Q of x comes out to be 24 times P of x by P of x power 4 times P of 1 by x, right? And P of x had roots what? P of x had roots 1, 2, 3, 4, so it can be written as x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4. And therefore, it will be x power 4. And instead of P of 1 by x, we have 1 by x minus 1, 1 by x minus 2, 1 by x minus 3, 1 by x minus 4. Right? And now we have to take the limit of this as x tends to 1. So first, I will multiply x power 4. 1, 1, x in each of these brackets, you will get 24, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4, divided by, it will become 1 minus x, 1 minus 2x, 1 minus 3x, and 1 minus 4x, right? And we have basically, x minus 1 will cancel with 1 minus x and become a minus here. We have minus 24, x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4, divided by 1 minus 2x, 1 minus 3x, and 1 minus 4x. That is coming as P of x by Q of x. When you take limit of this as tends to 1, limit of x tends to 1, P of x by Q of x, you can now just put the values of 1 in this, right? So what you end up getting is tw minus 24 into minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And here you are getting minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So this whole thing gets cancelled out and the limit is equal to minus 24. Right? 
So we recognize that Q of X was a polynomial which was reciprocal and we proceeded by understanding the definition of Q of X, which would be X power four into P power one by P of one by X with some constant C. We found the constant C because Q of X was said to be a monic polynomial, right? So using that result, we found the constant C and after that it was pretty straightforward to find the limits, right? Okay, so what we have learned in this video is that the roots of a reciprocal polynomial are inverse of the roots of the inverse of the non-zero roots of the original polynomial. We saw a couple of questions working on that. The next topic that we will cover in this course is about self-reciprocal polynomials. So self-reciprocal polynomials are polynomials which are reciprocal of themselves. However, that is a topic that we'll discuss in the next course. So we'll do the theory and a couple of questions on self-reciprocal polynomials in the next video. So stay tuned and if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share your thoughts in the comments if you have any specific questions. This is going to be a long course and we are going to do a lot of problems. So stay tuned and you'll learn a lot, hopefully. I'll see you next time.